Hello and welcome to another ATIP in Philosopher video with myself, Jonathan M.S. Pierce. I'm going to walk you through the front lines in the Ukraine war. Um, not a lot has changed, but a few minor points of uh, discussion in terms of territory uh, changing hands. So let's start with the claim from or the report from the Institute for the Study of War saying that there's a small sort of settlement to the 30 kilometers to the northeast of uh, of Kharkiv, that uh, here it is, there, Tanova. Apparently, there's been an assault across the border from Russia. So, Kharkiv is here, the second city of Ukraine, and this is uh, a settlement to, just to the south of that northern border with Russia. So, that's interesting. Not a lot of other, other information on that. So, that comes as quite a surprise. Belgorod, which is over the border in Russia, that's a um, uh, a major sort of logistical hub for Russia as they stage their attack on Ukraine and Belgorod takes a lot of um, supplies uh, and distributes them down to various places in Ukraine. Well, that is under attack. So this is from, yes, a missile looks to have hit an industrial building in Belgorod region. Of course, you never know whether that missile actually came from the Russians and misfired as Belgorod has had a number of missiles that have hit hit their own its own not a number of russian missiles have hit um places you know residential blocks and so so on in belgorod but uh fire's broken out there uh belgorod is under attack from the ukrainians as they try and hit some of the energy infrastructure in that town so we're going to first move along to the northeast of um ukraine here and look around kupiansk so kupiansk uh, there's been a little bit of activity just north of there in a in a place that we talked about yesterday. Here's a deep state map, and it shows uh, Tavoljanka. This is a pretty much contested uh, town. The Ukrainians have tried to get hold of that and not succeeded particularly well. Vilshana down to Petra, uh, sorry, Persho Travnevi. Here, deep state shows that this is under control of the Russians. I've shown that as as contested over over the last week, with Vilshana being sort of liberated by the by the Ukrainians, but this seems to indicate not. As ever, when we draw lines, they're often just grey zones either side of that. Uh, here, here they don't show Horobivka being controlled by the Russians. I said that yesterday that was uh, occupied by the Russians, but they and they are pushing on uh, Dvorishne. And they've actually been pushing further south towards Liman Pershi, Liman Pershi. So here is my map, uh, Tavoljanka, Liman Pershi. So we just go a little bit in, you will see Hor Horobivka under the control of the Russians. And actually what's happened is that the Russians have tried to push further south, uh, but this whole area is mined and it's quite, you know, wooded as you can see. And the Russians have failed to, to push south uh, and get control over Liman Pershi because apparently because of the, that heavy mining around here. Uh, but they are pushing uh, and knocking on the door of Dvorishne. Um, so we shall see what happens there, um, whether it's a, a little bit more sort of uh, pushing this way. But it must be said that, that they are struggling there in the same way that Ukrainians struggle with uh, Tavoljanka. The Russians are struggling with Dvorishne. So um, we shall see ha how that turns out. And as I say, there have been these moves down here. At, while at the same time, the Ukrainians are trying to push eastwards further down south. So there's this kind of, um, you know, the Russians Russians are trying to push in here and also push down south. Um, at the same time, the Ukrainians are trying to push eastwards. Okay, so just there you go. Um, not not that much going on. Uh, I'll keep you updated as far as what goes on there. Okay, on to the next uh, settlement that that's worthy of note, and that's actually 
just down south. So if we keep going down, just to let you know, give you the an idea of where I'm going. Um, we are moving down past Svatove. And apparently Svatove, this area is still, there's heavy fighting going on here, but not a lot has changed. The Ukrainians are still trying to hit hit across towards Svatove. There's quite a lot of artillery around Svatove and as well uh, in Troitsky as well that, that's hitting the Ukrainian lines. So we carry on going down south uh, and we start hitting this P66 highway, the uh, Krasna River and the Kherovets River here. The Russians have held back apparently an attack from the Ukrainians uh, around Novo uh, Novo uh, where they've tried to cross the Karabets River to to get a foothold here, but uh, but they have not succeeded as according to the Russians. And we come further down, and the Russians are still hammering away in this area, giving themselves a breather around Kremina. Now I have Dubrova under. Ukrainian control here, but apparently, uh, according to a number of sources, that looks like it's under Russian control now. And that is against what Deep State says. So Deep State has, which is broadly a pro-Ukrainian source, but as we come down here, we have uh, Dubrova under Rush, uh, under Ukrainian control, but there is pressure from the Russians. Well, I would say there's a few few sources just saying that, you know, Dubrova from um, Ukrainian control to contested, they moved it, was able to confirm presence in Torsky. Uh, Dubrova went silent after a recapture claim from the Russians. So they've adjusted it. Noel has adjusted that to uh, contested. And uh, Defmon uh, says that, the Russians were repelled to the west of Dubrova, right? So if they're repelled to the west of Dubrova, I, I'm, I would say, you know, if 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 the Ukrainians are saying, okay, we've we've repelled an attack here, then I would say, well, Dubrova looks like it's it's just a little more than contested. I would say it's probably falling into Russian hands. But these, there's a lot of toing and froing going on around here, and Ukrainians seem to be waiting for their big counterattack if that's if that's going to come. And I don't think this is a sign of, of much worry, but this is where a lot of the fighting is going on. So anyway, a little uh, a little bit of um, change in that area. As we continue down the front line past Dubrova, we come to uh, Bilirivka. So Bilirivka, there is there have been some attacks from the Russians that have been repelled, but they are trying hard to move on Bilirivka, it seems, just to the south of Kremina. Uh, Kremina's here, and you've got Rubizhne, um, Sverodunetsk, and Lysychansk, this kind of conurbation that happens around there. Um, so uh, Lysychansk, the Russians are trying to move west from there. And again, it's going to be about giving themselves a breather as they set up their defences and have been doing for some time. We, we come to this discussion about whether this operational pause is playing into the hands of the Russians. It gives them the chance to set up their defences in in the areas around these these t city or towns, um, as well as maybe Svatove as well, and down this P66 highway, protecting that railway link from Svatove to these other towns. But, uh, but we, I talked the other day about the defences that have been built, the Dragon's Teeth, and the possibly trenches as well, going from behind Bakhmut up uh, to the west of Lysychansk, loops around here, and then comes back down and follows this river basically all the way to the Russian border. And if the Russians have built up this as a defensive line, then it tells you what their intentions are. You know, this is this is definitely what they want to keep hold of, but also they are um, they are planning for the Ukrainians taking back all of this territory and even possibly these cities here such that they have their defensive line that keeps the or the or pretty much the 2014 annexed areas and a little bit more here under their control under the Russians control so that's what's going on there we'll move uh, sideways along to the Bakhmut area uh, and see what's going on there which is uh, a lot of the same 
A few things to note around Bakhmut. Uh, Noel says, no map changes. Hottest area is the eastern suburbs. Russian forces heavily shelled Solidar, Bakhmut and surrounding villages. Today was one of the heaviest in weeks, was the heaviest in weeks. Despite Russians throwing everything they have, uh, the um, Ukrainian forces haven't moved an inch. Heroes fighting, he says. And uh, just to, you know, it, it's, it's this trying to... Uh, surround Bakhmut in circular as I keep saying but nothing appears to change much and it leads you to wonder just why they're doing it what I don't understand what the point is like why why are they do they think they're actually liberating it because this is this is what Bakhmut looks like this is what Russian shelling has done to Bakhmut this is a kind of liberation that they are carrying out i mean it's incredible um on the flip side uh, this is some footage of russian helicopters uh, sorry ukrainian helicopters around bakhmut so the ukrainian helicopters are flying this close to bakhmut then that says quite a lot really a couple of uh i don't know me nine uh, sorry me eight helicopters i think but uh, that's that's quite there's quite some footage for being around Bakhmut. So uh, there you go. So uh, yeah, really not a lot of change in Bakhmut, but as as they say, heavy sort of shelling around uh, around the sides uh, and um, not not much movement at all. Let's see if I can find a decent enough map for you. Here we go. So here's the uh, Bakhmut encirclement attempt. So we've got the we've got Klish Chivka still under under some kind of um, threat from the Russians, and the Russians trying to get up north as well. But they're just getting nowhere in Bakhmutsky and Solidar. Although these places are getting heavy shelling as well as Bakhmut itself getting heavy shelling, but no change. Uh, and again, what are you doing? I mean, why are you beating your heads against this brick wall? What what are you achieving? In, in liberating, you know, what, what, I don't know, it's kind of like, what's the point of the whole war for the Russian soldiers? Do they really feel like they are liberating places, that this is for the good of the nation, when they are, you know, flattening places apocalyptically in order to get their sort of tactical advantage? So as we move down past Bakhmut, we come to Donetsk, and again, Avdivka, this sort of... Uh, attempt at encircling uh, another town. What do we have to say about Avdivka? Well, here it is. Here's my crappy map of Av Avdivka, and this is Donetsk, the fairly large city. And we have claims that uh, the Russians are making a little bit of progress in Pervomysky. Interestingly, the deep state map here, uh, again, I say, you know, Possibly it is from Ukrainian sources, but it also it lags a little bit. I find it is a really good map. The interface is lovely, and I, I like the way it works. But here, the Ukrainians aren't even in. Uh, sorry, the Russians aren't even in Pervomysky. Well, that's been reported for days. That that is that has been contested. So that some people say, why don't I use Deep State Map? Why don't I use Deep State Map? I, I do refer to it, but I don't like using it as as a as a complete guide because i just think it's not quite as accurate in some places as i'd like it to be um the claims about pervomysky uh, are that you know here here it's taking heavy shelling and the russians are sort of it, moving through it and here the claim is they superficially control it um i would i would agree with that because this has been where the the this has been contested really for a good week now um, but again, not not that much change in really in what's happening around Avdivka. The Russians claim that they they have controlled these at various points for Gianni and another at Pitney, um, but I don't think they do. Uh, we shall see. We'll wait and see there. Uh, so now we're going to move on down to Kherson and uh, the the front that's happening down there. Not a lot of movement here, but an odd bit of. Uh, an odd claim that I saw is so here's my um, map from the other the other day that was that shows that there's a big grey zone going across here. There have been claims of of repelled attacks, and these uh, 
it seems like the Ukrainians are just constantly doing probing attacks to try and get their information about what's going on here. We know that they are now entrenched in in the in this region that the that the Russians have built trenches. Uh, both zigzag trenches and straight trenches. Straight trenches aren't particularly a very clever thing to do. Um, but I have seen a report that uh, Staritsia, uh, St- Staritsia uh, sorry, is uh, under Ukrainian control. So here is a, a movement down there. But I, I've not seen that anywhere else particularly. It's just one, one claim I've seen. Um, Deep State has, again, pretty similar... A map here with with not so much a grey zone here, but actually controlled by the Russians. So they admit the Russians do control that area much further north towards Duchani now, and that Milove isn't under the threat it was uh, that we thought a week or so ago. But again, not a lot of um, not a lot of change there. Now, if we're talking about Kherson in general. We have the idea of what's going on with the Novokovka Dam, which keeps getting talked about, and the theories that uh, the Russians um, or the, U- the Ukrainians want to blow it up in order to trap the Russians in here. So if they if they flood this area, the Russians struggle to get across as it is. They would completely struggle if this was flooded, and then they could, you know, close in and 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 liquidate or capture the troops that were that were caught in this region the russians uh that's what the russians are claiming and that's what some people think the ukrainians can do i i just think the ukrainians blowing up that this dam is going to be so counterproductive for them in the long run even though it will obviously cut off the water to you to crimea but they could do that without blowing up the dam um just it's an information battle over this what what does seem is happening is that as the Russians are evacuating civilians, as they claim, up to sixty thousand civilians is their is their intention. They are supposedly hiding military um, armament and equipment and people in with these civilians. So they're effectively using uh, civilian shields, human shields, for their for a withdrawal of at least some of their forces. These are the claims, and that wouldn't surprise me one single bit. Now, a couple of further things to say. We have Berislav here, and apparently all the admin officials have been leaving Berislav. Uh, I meant to say this yesterday, actually. It seems all officials and admin staff have fled Berislav, leaving just conscripts to defend. In the last 17 days, another 38 settlements have been freed from Russia's occupation, making 88 liberations in total. So this is in Kherson. That's just an overall, uh, in the last couple of days, that's not the case. Um, but it's interesting that... Berislav officials have left. So that's good news for the Ukrainians. Bad news for the Ukrainians is that there is some evidence that they have lost quite a bit of equipment. So here's just an example. Four Ukrainian BMP infantry fighting vehicles and a T-72B tank were abandoned or destroyed by the Ukra- by the Russian army in Kherson Oblast. Two Ukrainian T-72 M1 tanks were also captured there. So here's visual evidence of, of quite a bit of equipment being lost and in fact that's what the russians are claiming so when there are these penetrating attacks whatever the reason is for these attacks the ukrainians do seem to be losing some equipment there as you i guess you would expect if if these attacks weren't repelled then you'd see the ukrainians probably continue i i don't i i i i imagine so in order that these are probing attacks, but then they stop and then they go back. Uh, you know, are they? Is it because they are being repelled and losing equipment and having to to head back and regroup? Um, yeah. So th- that's the situation uh, across uh, the fronts in Ukraine. Not too much change, but a few uh, points to to note. Um, let me know what you think down in the in the comments threads below. And remember, you can always support the channel through uh, the means in the description, but also you can go to uasupporter.com forward slash ATP forward slash ATP allows me to get a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of commission on these goods. Let's look at some tumblers. Here's some lovely sort of thermal tumblers uh, with with some emblems. So you can show your support for uh, for Ukraine. Anyway, uh, any help would be gratefully received. Thank you for your support so far. And please like, subscribe, share, and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the extra video later.